Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And in today's video, I wanted to do a recap on T Mobile's 5G standalone announcement from this morning. I've had a lot of you reach out to me immediately via email. I've had Peter Adderton reach out to me via Twitter. And on average, all of the questions that I got were all about what does this really mean and what does this really do for me? And then a couple of other questions that I did get, do I need to run to a T-Mobile store immediately and get a 5G device because I'll have that much of a better experience? So I kind of wanted to talk about that. And then, of course, I will leave this article in the description down below. And so you guys can see for yourselves, there are some percentages that are listed here. But a lot of people ask me, well, what does that really mean? And so I kind of wanted to, in this recap, break it down for you guys. So T-Mobile stated that there would be a performance increase across the board, right? So that's latency, upload, download, and even coverage. They even stated that this could give you 30% more coverage. So beyond the fact that they announced those three increases in performance, they also stated that they've expanded to 2,000 more cities with their 5G. So as I said, they now cover 1.3 million square miles of, LT of 5G within their footprint. And that now they added 2,000 additional cities over, I guess, a six-month time period. So what I was telling people this morning in the emails that I responded that a lot of the percentages that are being displayed are usually within closed environments in a lab. And then those percentages are be, are being put out to the public. But if we take that and we add it to a real world scenario, does that 30% still count? And the answer is no. In my opinion, that's just not the case. Maybe in rare cases, that could be the case. But when you see a 30%, you want to always go down about half to about 15% just so you don't get too hyped because of the fact that a lot of this testing does happen within closed environments and it's not usually a representation of a real world performance. Remember, real world performance, T-Mobile in urban areas, they have gained over the last five years a significant amount of market share, New York especially Los Angeles, uh, El Paso, Chicago. They, they've they gained a ton of subscriber base in a lot of these markets. So those percentages are going to vary in those markets because there's a ton of users. You just don't know where the network is loaded. Usually it's loaded at all times. So it's going to be different from a closed environment scenario compared to a real world scenario. That's the, that's the first thing that I wanted to point out to you guys. So... Remember also a big thing that I'm going to stress going forward. We're still talking low band, which is fine. You got to start somewhere, right? Verizon started with millimeter wave. T-Mobile's decided to start with low band, which I understand low band. You got to have your, your first layer has to be low band. You got to have coverage. If it's 3G LTE or 5G, you got to have the coverage. So, you know, congrats to them. Great rollout so far. They started in 17, 2017. We're, we're now almost in 2021. So definitely kudos to them. But if we're looking at it from an overall scale, the bandwidth on low band is still not anywhere close to what a mid band layer can produce, the 2.5. We're now also getting into the 3.5 range and up a little bit with C band and CBRS. And then, of course, we got the millimeter wave. So the whatever the performance increase is, whatever the performance that you're experiencing, the performance will only go as much as as fast as the bandwidth allows it to. So a lot of these early on, a lot of these tests that I've seen on a standalone core. So that's remember, once you go standalone, there's no LTE associated with it. There's no carrier aggregation. There's none of that mid band that we now see on today's LTE network. That standalone 5G is for now is just going to be 5G low band. So you're just going to have one carrier band 71 
and then whatever bandwidth is dedicated towards that. So in, that can vary. It could be 5 megahertz, 10, 15, in some cases 20, but that's very rare because remember they're splitting it between LTE and 5G. So I've seen speed tests 20, 30 megabits per second. You know, some have peaked out at around 48 megabits per second. But once again, even though there's a performance percentage of an increase, the bandwidth has its peak. You, you're just going to peak out. So you're going to see a very, very, very close performance to an LTE network, even on the standalone. Even though there's a 15% increase, 30% increase, whatever the case may be, it's not going to perform anything crazy. You're not going to get 200, 300, 400 megabits per second. The performance you're going to see is 20, 30, 50 megabits per second. There is a there is a max theoretical speed. I don't know it off the top right now, but that that's where the percentage of uh, increase of performance does kick in. That extra, like I said, closed environment, 30 percent, real world, 15 percent. And that's the that's kind of like the, the faster speeds that we're seeing because of the 5G technology. So it can take five megahertz or 10 megahertz above what we were able to see on um, on LTE. So I think a five megahertz channel on LTE tapped out at around 37.5 megabits per second. Now with this 5G that can go above 40. But again, in a real world scenario, especially once more people get onto the standalone devices, especially if the iPhone 12 can handle a standalone, like that number is going to decrease significantly because once again, there's going to be load on the network. Right now, if you are a S20 5G user and, you're ha and you have a T-Mobile variant or a OnePlus uh, 8 5G, I believe, uh, are the two devices that got the update this morning, you're pretty much once again on an empty network. You're on a standalone core 5G with the low band bandwidth. So you're going to see probably the most fastest peak speeds that it can do. But once everyone else starts getting on board, those numbers are going to be much lower and it's going to decrease. By that time, I think personally... I was in a very, uh, very interesting discussion earlier. By that time, they want to have a large part of that N41 incorporated into the network. So then at that point, you're going to be able to aggregate the band 71 with the band 41. And that's going to give you a much better performance on that standalone core. So that's going to um, not to throw out any any leaks or anything like that, but from now until December of this year, they, they are going to ramp that up. They're, they're looking at being at a decent percentage by that time on a nationwide scale. So there's going to be a lot of activity over the next four months. So like I said, it's unofficial. I'm not throwing anything out there that, you know, I'm not giving you guys a leak or anything like that. But early on, I was in a, I was in an interesting discussion. And over the next four months, they are wanting to ramp this up and, and push as push as much as they can. And as much as, of course, the municipalities allowed him to, and then as much as these these contractors are able to handle the work. So, like I said, a lot goes into that. It's the contractors. If they have enough manpower, then it's, of course, the municipalities. Um, a lot of them are going back and reopening. And then you got to look at the manufacturer as well. Whoever is manufacturing the equipment, if it's Nokia or Ericsson, you got to make sure that they're on the ball as well and that they're able to push out the demand that is uh, that is required. So there's a lot that goes into this, but be looking forward over the next four months. There's going to be lots of reports, lots of lots of Reddit posts of people posting panels, the, the N41 massive MIMO panels going up on the cell sites. So again, I just wanted to make this recap to kind of let you guys know that, look, I know T-Mobile is really good at marketing. And again, look, here you have the T-Mobile the infamous low band 5G coverage map against the millimeter wave coverage map of uh, of Verizon's in my opinion they shouldn't even be comparing these two coverage maps cuz they're totally different uh they serve totally different purposes so low band again for coverage which Verizon will eventually get to that level as well actually rather quickly within the next 4 months we're going to hear 
a DSS announcement from Verizon. So, in my opinion, this is this is garbage what T-Mobile is doing. But again, like I said, just uh, make sure you read the article. I will leave it in the description down below. But just keep in mind the hype factor. No, you don't have to run to the store and get a 5G device because of this. Do it whenever you feel comfortable. If you want to get one, good. You're probably going to have a better experience, or, uh, you know, compared to the LTE core that's loaded. Like I said, you're being pretty much moved to a core that nobody's really on. So if you want to do it for that reason, yeah, go ahead. Does the coverage really expand? Is it really much uh, larger footprint over the 600 megahertz that we're seeing on LTE? People have asked me, and the only reason that that could be the case is since it's a standalone core, T-Mobile may be pushing the limits of the site a lot further. So there's a huge uptilt happening to allow it to reach even further. So sites can reach technically in theory, especially with low band, they can reach really far. You guys have seen it. I'm sure you guys have seen it in, in, in videos and some articles that T-Mobile uses one cell site to reach 30 miles, to cover 30 miles. So I've seen it in testing in a theory. There was a, there was a test that took place somewhere in New Mexico. It was very rural, and they got one cell site with low band to push 70 miles. But of course, you don't in a real world scenario, you don't want to do that. that that's not good. You don't want to do it. But they just tested the theoretical uh, coverage that it can cover, and that's what it was able to do. So I think now with the standalone core and not a lot of people on it, they can up tilt and they could push it just a bit further than what the actual uh, LTE 600 is doing uh, today. So it, it's not that the 5G is just magically making the 600 frequ frequency go further. It's just T-Mobile is pushing it to go further. That's not, again, we've talked about it. That's not really the, the best way to go about it. If you reach a certain coverage limit that you feel is, uh, this is not good right here. We don't want to go any further than this. That means you're going to be in fair coverage territory. And usually AT&T and Verizon are the best at this. They usually have with, uh, you know, internally within the engineers, they want to put sites every five to six miles, which is going to give you solid performance along an interstate and a highway where you're traveling. You're going to be able to stream your, your video still. Your music, your calls are going to work fine. Your text messages are going to send uh, back and forth. But when you're on a T-Mobile network that is pushing the cell site to the max and it's it's pushing it to the very edge of the cell site and you're running into that fair coverage territory, the service performance of the service could get very annoying for you as a consumer. You, you might start seeing... Uh, calls drop, you might start seeing your videos buffer, you may uh, you may actually see the, the signal drop to no service or HSPA. So there's there's a lot of negatives to pushing the, the, the signal that far out. In some rural areas it's fine. If there's not a if there's not a lot of users on the wavelength, then that's decent. But again, going further and further away from the from the cell site with the signal your upload, your uploads are going to be weaker. So if you're doing a FaceTime call, you want to upload anything, it's going to be weaker. I think I've said this plenty of times. Your download is always going to hold up better further away from the cell side versus upload. Upload is going to tap out much, much sooner. And then you're going to have lopsided experience like the customers on Sprint have been experiencing. So by the way that I mentioned Sprint, also, just a quick reminder, if you are a Sprint customer and you have any of the 5G variants of the S20 or maybe even the OnePlus, the Sprint variants did not get the update to go standalone. So apparently, again, this is unofficial, there is a standalone SIM card that the Sprint customer can pick up in store. Like I said... There, there are cases being reported to me that if the Sprint customer is not on the device, is on a device that has not yet been moved over to the T-Mobile network, 
because it's not a device like an S20 and you call customer care, they can convert you over to the T-Mobile network. They have been told they can do so. So I'm thinking if you have an S20 on Sprint and you want to get on the standalone 5G network, you're just like, you know, screw it. I'm just going to go over to T-Mobile. I think you can pick up one of these SIM cards. It's a new looking SIM card. I've seen it. It's it's like black and pink. So it's different from the SIM card, the nano SIM cards that we have today for T-Mobile. But apparently that is the 5G standalone SIM card. So just to just to let you guys know, if you want to attempt that, call them or go to go to a store. Um, I, I don't know if there's a charge involved in that. Likely is. These SIM cards do cost the carriers money. So there's likely going to be a charge, of maybe 10, 15 bucks involved in this transaction. But check them out if you if you want to head to one of the local T-Mobile stores. So again, I thank you guys for tuning in. I just wanted to do this recap. It seems like there was a bit of confusion out there. Like I said, take that 30%, 40%, whatever it is with a grain of salt. Remember, most likely you are going to be caught in a real world scenario. You're not going to be in a closed environment. You're going to be potentially in downtown Chicago in a big dense urban area and you're going to be like well this 30 or 15 percent only got me two more megabits per second so just keep that in mind it could be a very underwhelming announcement but it is still they are still the first to do so on a on a standalone basis you know worldwide so I guess it's a great accomplishment so kudos to uh, T-Mobile and the engineering team so if you have been on the channel, you can go ahead and end this video now. If you are new, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you are notified when I do upload the content. Also in the settings, make sure you push, uh, push notifications. Have that enabled on YouTube. Also follow the Twitter as well and push notifications there. So you guys have two platforms to get the videos when they are uploaded and notified. YouTube, for whatever reason, has been late. I've seen people complain about it on Twitter. Um, I, I've experienced it myself. I follow all the channels and, uh, and I don't see the video until I accidentally run into the channel while I'm scrolling down my, my news feed on, on YouTube. So it does happen that YouTube does not push out the notification for whatever reason. Make sure to follow the Twitter. I do post the videos on there as well. And this is Tyrone with Tech Life. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.